Reporting has begun. I make a motion. So moved by Commissioner Sampson. Do I hear a second? Second. That's John Mudd. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay, I'll go for a vote. Mr. Sampson. Yay. Uh, Dawn Banks. I'm sorry, the audio was off, so I don't. I didn't hear what the motion was. The was motion it for the to it, it, yes. Are you in favor of uh, approval of yes. the minutes? Yes. Yay. Uh, Commissioner Mudd? Yes. And I too. The minutes are approved unanimously. Thank you. Okay, matters of discussion. Item number one, uh, villages of steeplechase. This was tabled from before, and I understand there's a subtle change. So uh, we'll go to the staff report. Janine, Director Harrington. Good evening, Planning Commission members. Uh, so yes, we did um, have a couple of meetings between the developer and the residents of the Steeplechase neighborhood. Uh, so they did bring back a revised master site development plan, which the only effect for the master site development plan was the um, change in density and the number of units for phase three. So in uh, the previous plan, there was 193 lots proposed and now they are showing 189 lots. Um, and that would bring the total for all three phases to 581 units. Uh, so that's really the only major effect that would uh, count for the master site development plan and what was reviewed prior to. Uh, and after talking to the town attorney, um, his recommendation was to, if you are going to provide um, a recommendation to make sure that you put which dated plan that you are referring to. So I made a um, draft template for a motion. Again, you can use this as your template uh, to make a motion to recommend approval of the revised steeplechase master site development plan submitted on August 29th, 2022. And from that, I will turn it back over for any discussion item. Mr. Chairman. Get your microphone on. John. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Mudd, please speak. Yeah, I, um, you know, obviously the reason we waited a month to consider this action was to allow the board to digest the testimony and written testimony provided at the public hearing. Um, I, I'm prepared to move forward with the project tonight. At the same time, I'm curious if any of the Planning Commission members or you, Mr. Chairman, have any thoughts um, after having a month uh, to, to review and think about the issues presented and whether or not uh, you have any comments or concerns related to the project. Um, I mean, I think we owe it to the people who attended the public hearing that they understand that this board hasn't just pushed their concerns aside, but have taken 30 days to review it. I know I have, um, and, and that's important. 
uh, that's part of the process. So again, I, uh, not, not putting anybody on the spot, but I'm just curious if anybody has any concerns or individual um, problems with it, or they think it's just great as is. Uh, it, it would be nice to you know hear from the board if if you have any concerns. I'm sorry, I'll say that again so I can be heard. Are there comments from other commissioners? Chairman Gann, this is uh, this is Commissioner uh, go Banks. ahead, Commissioner I Banks. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you saw my hand raised. Um, the concern I have for me is that I am a resident of the villages of Steeple. And I don't believe I can render an unbiased vote or opinion with respect to this action. So do I understand that you are recusing yourself? That is correct. I think that would be the appropriate thing to do. We would still have a quorum, would we not? We would. Okay. Understanding that uh, Commissioner Banks is recusing herself. Any other discussion? This is Commissioner Simpson. Go ahead, Commissioner Sampson. Yes. Um, I would just like to make a couple of comments that uh, Commissioner Mudd requested. Number one, I do have concerns that linger about this uh, final plat. And um, I do find it very difficult to uh, to render a uh, support for that. However, that being the case, from a planning commission standpoint, just strictly based on the uh, regulations, I went back and reviewed them, strictly based on the town goals, the comprehensive plan, and everything involved, even though I have concerns, and even though I do think, um, or I should say, I do know that this will be revisited again in this form and other forms. With that being said, I think that um, it meets all the qualifications. And I think those other concerns um, should be addressed in the appropriate form. And um, I think at that time, I feel more comfortable voicing those concerns, but this is strictly for planning and commission. And the extraneous concerns, um, I think of all, do not fit this, this board, I put it that way. And then finally, I would like to say that um, I think the residents of Steeplechase, of which I must state for the record, I'm also a member, I really appreciate and I do think they stated the concerns succinctly. I do think in this case, the developer clearly understands their frustration and concerns. And like I said, I was like to reiterate that this is not the end of this discussion. And so that's the only comments I have. Any other comments or uh, questions from uh, commissioners? Yeah, Mr. Chairman and board, those were great comments by Greg. Uh, and he's absolutely right. After being scolded at the last public hearing over what issues can be considered, should be considered, or not to be considered, and so on, um, it remains for me the primary concern to work through in the future is if the provision of a second access point. Uh, obviously, you know, this is not the stage to uh, explore that issue. The preliminary plan of subdivision phase, which staff has already indicated, will be the proper time frame for this board to look into traffic studies and access points and so on. So I look forward to that phase upcoming. Um, as I said, I'm ready to proceed with the approval of this tonight, recommended approval. But I'd like to place a condition uh, of approval on our recommendation that basically says that the applicant in coordination with the town shall proceed to design and construct a second access point for the project. That, that's the generic condition of approval. 
Um, I've been looking at Google Maps and access areas. And honestly, at this point, the only location I see as viable, potentially viable for an access point is through uh, Lindsbrook Place, which is through the town public works facility on 301. A connection at that uh, current roadway, the place, would place it directly across from the crossover on 301, which would be a big advantage. Uh, how that current place road connects to steeplechase is yet to be determined. There may be other properties that are involved, uh, but I think that's the closest and most direct access point uh, that can be achieved for this project. I don't believe we can wait for stagecoach. Uh, that's too many years away. Uh, and we shouldn't be supporting 300 units with a single access, and we certainly shouldn't be supporting 581 units with a single access. So from my point of view, time is of the essence. The preliminary plan stage is before us, and I'd like to see the applicant take uh, diligent efforts uh, to move forward with the creation of a second access point. So that, that's a, a more detailed version of the condition of approval. Uh, it, it, it will obviously kick in at the preliminary plan phase uh, and be very interested in looking at how we can solve that outstanding issue. So that's all I have to say at this point. Uh, if appropriate, I will make the motion to provide a recommendation of approval with the prior listed condition. I'll repeat it again, that the applicant in coordination with the town shall proceed to design and construct the second access point for the project. So that's my motion with condition of approval. Is there a second on that motion? This is Commissioner uh, Sampson, my second motion. Okay, so we have a motion to approve with the condition uh, previously stated, and that has been seconded. Is there any other discussion? Okay, not hearing any. Um, Commissioner Sampson, yay or nay? Yay. Uh, Commission, Commissioner Mudd, yay or nay? Yes. I'm going to vote yes, although I'm not crazy about the condition. Um, I'm voting yes because fundamentally what we are doing is making a recommendation to the town council to approve this project moving forward. Um, but obviously this meeting has made the conclusion that that will carry a condition with it. Any other questions or comments on this subject? Okay, that ends that subject. And for the applicants, Mr. Reimer, Mr. Scott, Ms. Furlaghi, thank you very much for your presence. Uh, next item, Mallard's Pond, final plat. Staff report, Director Harrington. Okay, good evening again, uh, Planning Commission. So the Mallard's Pond final plat is before you tonight for the final plat approval. Uh, the property is located at the just north of the intersection of Scroggin Street and Lodge Street. Again, as a refresher, it is the R3 zone. Um, it's currently vacant and it's just a little... Um, over three acres. Um, so the applicant had submitted their preliminary plat request, um, which was reviewed and approved by the Planning Commission at the August 3rd, 2022 meeting. Um, as noted previously, this will create 24 townhome lots with two means of ingress and egress from Lodge Street and Chesapeake Street, and all other um, requirements are being met in accordance with the town code. Uh, so the final plat is consistent with the preliminary plat that was approved in August and is in conformance with all applicable sections of the town code. School seat allocations are available for all, all 24 lots under the FY 2023 school allocation cycle, and therefore staff is recommending approval of the final plat in accordance with section 173-24 of the code of the town of La Plata. And I'm happy to answer any questions you have of me, and I believe the applicant is online as well. Are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Uh, Mr. Chairman, John Mudd, uh, Janine, I don't want to sound like a broken record. Uh, this will always be a concern of mine when we consider a final record plat. Uh, and your, your staff reports are very airtight. 
um, particularly with regard to school allocations. That's an important consideration. Uh, but water appropriations always sticks in my mind as a key uh, item that has to be uh, ready to go when we approve a final plat, because when we approve the final plat, the Planning Commission is saying that all facilities are available for the project. Um, and I'm not suggesting they're not, but if there's a way you could include a little snippet in future staff reports that address that issue, one sentence, uh, I think it would, it would provide a, a clearer record uh, and would ease my concerns. So um, again, not trying to be critical, but just want to make sure we as a commission are considering all of the factors uh, that we should be considering when we approve a record plan. Absolutely. And what I can do is I can refer to our water and sewer um, studies that were done in 2020. And this project was uh, taken into consideration at that time. And it is on the list of uh, proposed developments that have water and sewer available. Right. So I'll make sure to do that moving forward. Well, that, that's super. I mean, that's, you know, or that information will, will ease, obviously, our concerns. It sounds like you're already ahead of the curve. So I appreciate that. Any other questions or comments for Director Harrington from the commissioners? Okay, Director um, Harrington has uh, recommended approval of the Mallards Pond final plat. Do I hear a motion from the commissioners? Chairman Gann, this is uh, Commissioner Banks. I, um, I motion that we approve the final plot, plat for now at this point. Thank you, Commissioner Banks. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Mudd. Any discussion? Okay, Commissioner Sampson, yay or nay? Yay. Commissioner Banks, yay or nay? Yay. Commissioner Mudd, yay or nay? Yes. And yay for me also. The uh, motion passes unanimously. And uh, thank you for the applicant's presence. And we will move on to Agricopia Section 7A Final Plat. Director Harrington. Okay. So this is a similar situation. The Agricopia Section 7A Preliminary Plat Amendment was brought before the Planning Commission on August 3rd of 2022. Uh, they submitted the uh, revision to adjust the lot lines of the, the same number of lots and uh, density is proposed. And Section 7A will create 25 lots. Um, as noted, uh, for this one, they do have water and sewer allocations. This was taken into consideration under the uh, 2020 Water and Sewer Comprehensive Plan. Uh, they do have school seats that have been allocated under the FY 2023 um, school allocation list. Um, and as noted, they will be um, including nine single family units and 16 duplex units as part of this section. And there are open space parcels, um, including a public use lot for a pump station uh, proposed. So Section 7A is designed in accordance with the approved preliminary plat the Agricopia subdivision and the 2020 comprehensive plan. Um, as noted that the um, development is now zoned PDAG and staff is move, uh, recommending approval of the final plat in accordance with section 173-24 of the town code. Are there any questions or comments for Director Harrington from the commissioners? Uh, not hearing any, could I entertain a motion? Mr. Chairman, this is John Mudd. I'd make the motion that the Agricopia Section 7A final plat be approved. Thank you, Commissioner Mudd. Is there a second? This is Commissioner Sampson. I second the motion. All righty. The motion has been properly moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Not hearing any. Commissioner Banks, yay or nay? Yes. Commissioner Mudd, yay or nay? Yes. Commissioner Sampson, yay or nay? Yay. And yay for me also. Passes unanimously. And we move on to Pine Grove, section 
K2. So they um, broke the neighborhood up into three different phases. That way they could record lots um, as they go. Uh, so in August of, um, find my bearings here. So for phase, uh, neighborhood K, phase two, they will be creating 49 lots. The preliminary plat for neighborhood K was reviewed and approved on August 4th of 2021. That included a total of 176 single-family dwelling units, and they did purchase 200 single-family dwelling units under the county's Development Rights and Responsibilities Agreement, uh, which will be applied to Neighborhood K. Um, so this portion will also be including 3.78 acres of open space, more or less, um, and they have uh, they are in compliance with the Water and Sewer Master Plan. Uh, that was why one of the reasons why they built the Villa Lane pump station, and they are including a sewer trunk line that's going to extend from Route 6 all the way up to Rosewick Road. Uh, so that is currently under construction as we speak. Um, and therefore, staff is recommending approval of the Pine Grove Neighborhood K Phase 2 final plat in accordance with Section 173-24 of the Town Code. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Director Harrington from the commissioners? Well, Mr. Chairman, John Mudd, I just uh, have a query for our director. Um, I would find it beneficial if you can provide a copy of the executed DRRA for this project. Now, I understand that the majority of the guts of that document are Charles County related, but it is a three-way agreement, obviously, and um, my bigger concern is less about school allocations as it is I know there were conditions of approval and stipulations in the document pertaining to traffic access points and traffic studies. Uh, and I think that information would be beneficial uh, to have for this board. Um, a lot of times we look at it in a wrong light in the sense that we think traffic related to this project is either a county or a state problem, uh, but it's really the town's central issue to contend with uh, in concert with State Highway and the county. So uh, again, that uh, would be helpful if that could be provided in the future. Uh, so I just thought I would plug that in while I had the chance and I appreciate your help. I will certainly look into that for you. Uh, I don't think that should be a problem. Um, I know it should be on one of the past council agendas, um, so it would be out in the public. And I think the last from the last town council meeting, uh, there had been discussion if the applicants on and they want to touch on this anymore, feel free. Um, but we had talked to the council about uh, trying to write a letter to the State Highway Administration um, and maybe include the county to see if we could send a letter of support to put the traffic's, traffic light in sooner rather than later um, since they have their warrants. Um, and I think that their warrants don't meet a traffic signal until about 1,000 units. If I remember correctly, I could be wrong. Um, so to, we're planning on writing a letter of support or looking into writing a letter of support to try to get that placed sooner. Well, that's very encouraging, Janine. That's happy news. Um, absolutely, uh, you know, you say it'll take at least a thousand units before the warrants are met, but the truth is we know the warrants are gonna be met and the sooner we can plan for the ultimate configuration at those two key intersections, both Rosewick and Route 6 Charles Street, uh, the better off we'll be. Every time I ride by, uh, the current access point on Charles Street, I think, gee, that's, that looks too small. Um, and in the grand scheme of things, it, it may require a wider road section to support a signalized intersection. So um, again, that's an important consideration as we proceed with this project. And I do you see Danielle Conroe is on. Do you have anything to add to that? Uh, yes, sorry. Danielle Conroe with Rogers Consulting, project manager for Pine Grove. Um, I wanted to respond to the traffic study updates in regards to DRA. Um, you're, you're right, um, Commissioner Mudd, that the DRA does address updates to the traffic study as well. Um, off memory, I believe that we are to update the traffic study every 750 units or every three years, whichever comes sooner. Um, and we are already in the process of our first update. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Are there other questions or comments for Director Harrington? 
Okay, not hearing any, could I entertain a motion for upon her recommendation to approve Pine Grove Neighborhood K2? Commissioner Sampson, I make a motion to accept the Pine Grove K2 plan. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Sampson. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Banks. Second. Is there any further discussion? Not hearing any. Uh, Commissioner Mudd, yay or nay? Yes. Commissioner Sampson, yay or nay? Yay. Commissioner Banks, yay or nay? Yay. yay. And yay for me also. Passes unanimously. And Pine Grove K3. So I'll have the same speech um, for the neighborhood K phase three. Uh, this section phase of the neighborhood K is about 12, a little over 12 acres. Um, and they will be creating 57 lots in this phase. Um, as noted, they already have the school seat allocations purchased through the county. Um, and they will be providing a little over six acres of open space within this phase as well. Um, and we found that it is consistent with the preliminary plat that was approved on August 4th, 2021, and is in conformance with section 191- or one, I'm sorry, 173-24 of the town code, and therefore we recommend approval. Any questions or comments for Director Harrington from the commissioners? Yeah, I have one. Is it is my math correct? Half of the space is open space? Yes. That's part of the TDX regulations is um, enhance, uh, protecting right. the environment. And there is floodplain um, that goes through uh, along the entire property. So they are preserving the majority of the site uh, for neighborhood K in open space. Very good. Any other questions or comments for Director Harrington? Okay, so Director Harrington has recommended approval. Do I hear a motion? And again, I make a motion. We approve the final plat for Pine Grove Neighborhood K3. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Banks. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Mudd. Any further discussion? Okay, then we'll go for a vote. Uh, Commissioner Sampson, yay or nay? Yay. Commissioner Mudd, yay or nay? Yes. Commissioner Banks, yay or nay? Yes. And I vote also yes. Passes unanimously. So we have completed matters of discussion. We move on to matters of information um, and go to the Planning Department project update. All right, thank you, Chairman Gann. So for upcoming projects, um, we, as we discussed tonight, pending master site development plan approval by the town council. Um, I believe that the uh, master site development plan is going for a public hearing to the town council at the September 27th meeting. Uh, so we will be pushing out those notifications, posting signage um, to get that publication um, out to the public. And pending that approval, we would then proceed forward with the preliminary plat review um, and the traffic impact study, looking at the details of the site. Um, I did go out and meet with the residents along with the developer um, a couple of weeks ago and uh, heard all of their complaints and concerns of the neighborhood. Um, and Mr. Mudd, there was someone uh, within the residents community that did mention uh, that connection to the public works facility. Uh, so that's something that we'll have to take up with the town council um, and our operations department, public works department, uh, to see if that would be a feasible connection. Um, Planning Commission rules and procedures is forthcoming. Staff has drafted um, just some procedures to help with, uh, you know, day-to-day -day meetings, um, especially when we're getting into hybrid meetings and how uh, the, the board should function um, in those situations. So we are currently uh, reviewing that with the town attorney. Uh, to make sure that we've covered all of our bases, that I didn't, you know, misspell everything and make everything uh, 
too difficult. Um, and so once we're, uh, we get those comments back from the town attorney, I will then bring that to the planning commission so you can review it, provide your own commentary, um, concerns, edits, those types of things. So we can work on that together. Um, and then we, as been mentioned before, um, we have several draft code revisions that are pending. Um, it's just time consuming and finding the time to do them. But this, you know, as I mentioned before, and I, I don't mean to scold and, and beat, the, beat the dead horse, but uh, when we look at project reviews, especially for the Planning Commission, it, it really goes into what our code stipulates. So when I am, you know, I, I think that tonight we've also noted um, concerns with being a resident of the neighborhood and, and those types of things. So I have to maintain a neutral boundary. Um, I cannot uh, say I hate something. I can't say that I love something. I just have to review it by the code and, and state facts. And that's what I try to do to the best of my ability. Uh, we're all human and we, you know, make mistakes sometimes. So I, I appreciate you guys pointing me out when I do that. Um, but this is where we can make those changes. And if there's something that seems off or just doesn't seem right, or we want to review in detail to see if there's a better way of doing something, this is our opportunity to do so. Um, so, you know, this goes for our sign code, even that I'm reaching out to the Little Plate of Business Association. Do you have any comments? What do you see you, you deal with this? You know, how are you advertising with the public? What issues do you have? Um, it's definitely going to go into our chapter 173 and our process for how, you know, a subdivision moves forward. Um, again, that the zoning code, that's our master site development plan and our site plan process. So if there's something that we need to look at or evaluate, you know, we can certainly do that. And we give the planning commission the opportunity to voice your concerns. And then ultimately the council does approve and adopt the code. Um, but we all work together on that. And again, I'm happy to receive commentary um, from anyone that has anything to say about um, ways to improve our code or what to look at. So. so just to piggyback on that, whenever we go through that process, we we do offer an opportunity for the public to provide comment also. Correct? Absolutely. It will have to go through a public hearing process. Right. Um, There's certain chapters that do not require a public hearing under state code, um, but they are reviewed within public meetings. And there are like the zoning code absolutely does require a public hearing. So that will go before uh, the planning commission and the council with a public hearing. OK, um, let me make a break here. This is Mr. Earnshaw just walked in. We might have already covered your project. You're approved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not a problem. Thank you for visiting. Uh, we're actually going to be at the end of the meeting here pretty soon. So if you want to hang around. Before the town actually approved them after the fact kind of thing. I'm just saying that process. We do to... want it beforehand. So we okay. want to coordinate with SMECO. We okay. found that, especially with some other sections and some other neighborhoods, that um, when SMECO gets out there, they're saying, where's your lighting plan? Okay. And if we don't have one, then they're not installing the lights. But next, we're working on that. Yep. Next, on so, the, yeah, the, it, the absolutely. But before it was waste. After the fact, yeah. After yeah, the yeah now they want it beforehand. Okay, so just have an entire problem where they think it should go, or do you want to let me mean if you did it before and put the X? Oh, no, that, yes. But yeah, have mean. them submit that to me, okay, and then perfect. I'll coordinate with SMECO. All right, thank you. You're welcome. You too. Okay, back so to yes, you for the uh... lighting plans are required for site plans now <laughs> and subdivisions. Um, uh, so just for our business updates, we did issue a use and occupancy permit for 114 Drury Drive for L and I am I'm not going to say this properly. Um, I apologize for my pronunciation. El Riconcito Salvadorino Restaurante. Um, I've heard it's delicious, so go check it out. Um, for matters of information, uh, just an update that the Maryland Department of Planning did approve the priority funding area exception request for 143 Morgans Ridge Road and 10411 La Plata Road. Those were two outstanding annexations that uh, have not been able to connect to public water and sewer because they couldn't get the Bay Restoration Grant funding. So we are we've gotten to the point where it's over in the hands of the health department. 
So they just need to finish up their applications um, and we have to submit invoices so they can get that taken care of. But that's great news on getting those approved. Um, and as I mentioned before, we're working through our um, code revisions, procedures manual, um, still trying to work with our uh, operations department to create an updated development capacity analysis, taking into consideration our water and sewer comprehensive plan. Again, time just seems to be slipping away as uh, we go through our day to day duties. So that's all I have. If you have any specific questions of me, I'm happy to answer those. Any questions or comments for Director Harrington? Okay, not hearing any. Uh, Commissioner Bry um, Bryant Board is not here tonight. Is there anybody from the Town Council on the call who could bring us up to date on the latest for the Town Council? Not hearing any. Is there anything else for the good of the meeting that should be covered this evening? Then we adjourn this meeting at, um, what time is it? 636 meeting adjourned. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Recording is stopped. <laughs>